David Cooper from Clavinova Clinic and E-Pianos. Today I want to show you on a Yamaha CVP piano about recording. Now we've got various different recording methods. Um, one of them is audio record. The one I'm going to show you is actually called MIDI record. And MIDI is using the, um, the notes that you played in the order that you played them so that if you were to take a MIDI recording to another product, it would pick out the same voices and the same uh, styles or whatever you're using and it would know how long you held notes down for to to make that recording if you used audio it would be more like a tape record it would listen and it would just basically play back an audio recording of what you played in if you're using MIDI recording you've got two ways to record you've got a quick record or you've got the step by step adding lots and lots of tracks and what I'm going to do today is show you how to add more than one track together to make um, maybe five different sections that all go together and give you a bigger sound. It's a bit like the rhythm section would do on the, uh, the, the backing section if you want to use it. But if you want to personally do those, the bass line and the drums and the piano accompaniment, we can do that all separately and add those parts in to make a, a sort of backing or a song recording. But you've done it all personally rather than record relying on the, the backing section. So we're going to use the, um, the multi-track um, recording in the MIDI section. Uh, come over to the piano and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. So the song control on the main panel is where we can record from. We've got a bit like an old tape recorder. We've got the start, um, the stop button, the play pause, rewind and fast forward. And this would be your record. The round one is your record. But we can actually duplicate that on the screen. Over on the main screen here, we've got both sides of the voices. We've got uh, the drums and we've got the song area. So if I go into this song box here, there's an arrow in the top corner. If I press that, that will now give me the same buttons. And we've got the stop, play, pause, rewind, fast forward and record in red. And um, it gives us some other stuff on there as well. But essentially, this is where we record from. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to record first using my piano sound. So we have to make sure that the voice that's selected, I've just got one section, the main turned on, is a piano voice. So I'm going to go across to the panel, select the piano voice. I'm just going to choose the CFX Concert Grand and then close that. And that will come back to here again. But the main recording area I'm going to use when I press the red button shows me all the tracks that I can be using. And there we go. Now we've got the piano set up in um, the first uh, track, which is track one. And I'm going to turn off the tracks um, that I'm not going to use for the left voice and the lower and the mixed voice. And I'm also going to get rid of all this accompaniment section, which is on the right. I don't know why it's not on the left, but we anyway, we've got it here. We can press style all and that will remove the recording from the style section. And it's also showing at the top we're on MIDI record, which is MIDI musical instrument digital interface. And that means we're adding tracks together and they're going to be how long we held the note for, what sound is selected rather than just a, a microphone hearing what I'm doing, which is the new audio record. So we've got one track ready to record. We're in um, the piano voice and I can use a metronome to make it work better. So if I put on this metronome here, speed seems OK. We're ready to play. And as soon as I start playing, um, if I try, um, it will start to record me. So I'm just going to start. We could start it first with this record start. But I'm going to sync it in with my first note. I get that wrong let's just do that again okay so I'm going to record and I'm going to do it again with the there we go try again and now I've recorded that I can press the stop and that's now uh, recorded that first track and we can play it back now we can press the play it shows me the lights, the notes. Okay, so that's all in there. That's nice. Okay. Now, the second thing we can do is maybe add a right hand track to that. So let's just go back into record again. And this time I'm going to change the number one uh, to a number two. Okay. And that now means I'm going to record it to the second track. Okay. Now I could change the voice, but I'm going to leave it as a piano sound. So I'm now going to play along and the moment I start, 
because I started straight away before, it's going to start on that first beat. Now, because I didn't use the metronome, it wasn't quite in sync, and my timing was rubbish, actually. It was appalling. So I could do that again. In fact, I will. I'm going to do it again. Record. Still on track two. Use the metronome this time. And then we've got that rigid beat to follow. And I'm going to record again. Much better. And then we've got two tracks now recorded. And we can hear them both back together again by pressing the play. And the lights show for both. two tracks in our MIDI record now recorded and if we go into that page we can see we've got them all in there we've got um, uh, one and two both both in there together now let's just cancel back for a sec I'm going to choose a different sound now I'm going to play along with it um, with an extra voice so let's go now to choosing a sound from the screen I'm going to go over here and choose the strings and vocal section I'm going to go into the classical choir and I'm just going to choose Boys Choir Ooh. It's a nice sound. So close that back again. And this time we're going to record a third track. So press record. Change this track again to number three. OK. And now again, the moment that I start playing, it will record. So I've got to know what key I'm in. I'm going to play over the top of it. I was playing in the key of C. So I'm just going to play some notes that work alongside that. And stop. Let's try them together now. Play it back. So we've got three different tracks that are all playing simultaneously that we've played in at different times. And they could be a, a backing track to play over the top lots of times, or they could just be uh, our full recording of the song. So now that's done, the last thing you want to do is to save it. You want to store it into the instrument or onto a memory stick so we can uh, use it again later on or something. So OK, so this is the disk drive picture where we can go to save the song. So we just press that and then we want to go. We're already in user. That's the right place. So save here. And then I'm going to get rid of the letters new song where this typewriter comes up. Just delete the old letters and I'm going to call it D C new song. OK, and that's now called it DC new song look. And when I want to come back to that at any point, I can go into the song area, make sure I'm in user and it will show in DC new song. So it's quite easy to record parts. We could do up to 16 different parts and then you can listen back and you can decide whether you want to join in with it or use it to play back and show people what you've recorded. But it is giving you the opportunity to actually add parts together. Now it might be the parts from the music or it might be the parts that you're improvising over the top of something you've already played. So it's, it's a great way to build up your musicianship and I would encourage you to have a try on that. I'm David Cooper from ePianos and Clavinova Clinic. I hope you found this video useful.